am really struggling with stamp duty. I know you keep explaining it to me and it sort of slightly goes over my head a little bit um, in terms of this penalty stamp duty piece, which I struggle with a lot. So could we kind of do it very, very slowly? Um, if, if I move out of the house and buy another house, then? So, so stamp duty is payable when a house or pro property costs more than £40,000. Yes. Um, if you are just buying a property, so let's take, the, let's take the replacement out straight away, you just have your standard rates of stamp duty. Yes. If you're replacing a main home, <clears throat> which means that you are buying a property within three years of disposing your main home, then you are just going to pay the standard rate of stamp duty. Yes. But in the meantime, when I buy, when I move out, when I leave and then buy the second home, then I'm going to have... Additional rate to pay. Exactly. If you haven't sold the previous home. And that's 3% across the board, is it? Yes. Easy. Yes. But it, so the, that three year window that I just talked about, that applies going, looking forward and looking backwards. So you have your property A, which is your main home. Then you move out and you buy property B, which is your new main home, but yep. you haven't sold property A. When you buy property B, you will have to pay a surcharge of 3% stamp duty. Yep. That's, that's going to happen. Then when property A sells, which might be in three or four months time, you can claim a refund on that 3% surcharge that you paid on property B. Yes. So it's timing that also matters. It's not just replacing the main home. Yeah, so I can avoid, I can sidestep that cash flow problem by giving property A, say to you. Yep. And then going off and buying property B. Very easy. If we're, let's just ignore CGT for that, for that on, example, yes, but yes. For the moment, please, let's. If, if you are doing that, then yes, you just want to dispose of property A first before buying property B. Very good. Now, what happens if we've both got a second home by the seaside? If you both have a second home by the seaside. Say we co-own it. We co-own it. Mm. As long as you're still replacing the main home when you buy property B, yep. then the same rules that we just talked about apply. And is this going to be like a principal private residence test, similar or not? The really? tests are different if okay. you look at the legislation. So the stamp duty it's tests fine. are just, they are based on fact alone. It doesn't matter what you've nominated as your main home. This okay. is just looking at, is this property your main home before you sell it? Um, or before you dispose of it, before you transfer it. And if it is, as long as you're replacing your main home, the additional rate doesn't apply. If you're keeping your main home and then you want to buy a property in wherever, Wales, for example, then the additional rate is going to apply. Why? Because that's not my main home, because yes. it's a second purchase. Yes, and it's not a replacement of the main home. Okay, so say that um, I am now buying, I'm going to stay in one home, I'm going to buy a second home for um, my child to be brought up in. The additional rate of stamp duty will apply. I will apply? Yeah. No way around it? There are ways around it, but if you, if you were just not thinking about trust, if you're just buying it for your child who's under 18, the yep. child is treated as, your, the purchase is assessed on you as the purchaser, and as you already have a property you will be subject to the additional rates. Purchased in a trust and I might have a swing at getting or avoiding it. Possibly. Thanks very much.